Hello everybody, it's your man Joe Mock2694, and I'm here with a trailer breakdown for a game that I just found out about. So, bit of a disclaimer at the beginning, I am not a huge fan of Lord of the Rings. You know, it's, it's not, I never actually read the books, and I don't own them or anything. I do own all three of the movies, and I have seen the Hobbit films, which were pretty cool. And uh, I do own, in my opinion, what is the best uh, video game ever based on the subject matter of Lord of the Rings, which is Middle-Earth Shadow of Mordor. For those of you who don't know what that is, Middle-Earth Shadow of Mordor is a game about a guy named Talion, who is a ranger of uh, the Black Gate of Gondor, who has a wife and a kid who's trained to become a ranger. And one night, a bunch of Uruks, which are different from Orcs, apparently... I don't know the difference, so don't get mad at me. Overtake the Wall, the Black Gate, and three big names that work for Sauron, the Dark Lord, or whatever you want to call him, come in and ritualistically murder Talion's wife, Talion's son, and Talion. Only Talion is then banished from death, as it were, by the wraith of an elf, and you find out who this elf is later on in the game, and the two of them go on a giant adventure to try and take down the Black Hand of Sauron to keep him from bringing Sauron back to power. And the biggest claim to fame of the game was the fact that all the Uruks in Mordor were individualistic. A lot of them looked alike, but if any of them managed to kill you, they'd get a name and then a list of attributes, and they'd become a captain in the hierarchy. And then you could either hunt them down and kill them, or later on you get the ability to brand them and brainwash them into fighting against Sauron's forces as opposed to fighting for them. And it was just a really cool system of, you know, they have these weaknesses, these strengths, these things they fear, these things that make them tougher. You could craft your own stories for them. Uh, one really good example is a guy named Tyr Grace. He did a huge freaking series on trying to find the best orcs to brand and make his war chiefs. And uh, it's a pretty entertaining series. He's a pretty entertaining guy. But I just found out today that they're actually making a freaking sequel to Shadow of Mordor called Middle Earth Shadow of War. The big problem I had with the ending of Shadow of Mordor was that it was sequel baity as fuck. Spoilers, it ends with you beating Sauron and then Talion immediately saying, well, he's not gone. We didn't completely destroy him. And so we must stay until he's completely gone. We cannot move on to the hereafter. Him, when he says we, he means himself and the wraith. He says we cannot move on until we have made sure that there is no possible way that Sauron can ever come back. And then the last line of the game is Talion looking at the camera going, it's time for a new ring. And apparently, based on the trailer, because I have seen the trailer before, just earlier today... Uh, apparently they do craft a new Ring of Power. Which means, because this takes place between The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings, none of it's consequential. This ring is going to be destroyed, and people are going to freaking forget about it. Somehow. I'm not complaining. I'm saying it's a great thing that... Because th this was a freaking awesome game. It's a really damn good game. And they said that they're going to rework the Nemesis system and make it better. They're going to give you new powers and crap. So, yeah, I want another one. I'm just... Story-wise, wondering how the hell they're going to justify making another Ring of Power. And yeah, the Wraith is Calabrimbor, the elf that made the rings. You know, the rings, all of them. And then he was betrayed by Sauron, and Calabrimbor tried to use this ring, which you actually get to do in this game. There's a DLC campaign called The Bright Lord, where you play as Calabrimbor and use the power of the one ring. But apparently now you have another one. Somehow. So I'm going to watch the trailer again because I've only watched it once and I'm going to call out when I pause it just to point out what I'm seeing. So starting at zero in three, two, one. May contain content inappropriate for children. Well, no shit. The world of men is ending. The world of men is ending. So we have Gondor and we have Talion crafting... The new ring in the fires, in the of, fires Mount of Mount Doom. A ranger and a wraith bound together in death crafted the one thing that could challenge Sauron a ring of power. 
Okay, okay, okay. Talion gets blasted off of Calabrimbor. In the in this, we see the two of them separate, you know, talking to each other several times. I don't get how this blast from the ring physically separates them enough to where what's about to happen happens. But so the ring flies off. And then he gets whisked away by something. Talion's armor doesn't look the same either. So Sauron is somehow alive. Somehow. Will be contained no longer. So all the orcs we killed in the first game mean nothing. They've got weaponized grouts. Okay. Pausing at 113. The ring flies onto Talion's finger. Somehow that keeps him alive. The only thing keeping him alive beforehand was the fact that Calibrimbor's spirit was inhabiting his body. That's what was keeping Talion alive to begin with. So... Somehow, he must have imbued some of his soul into the ring for it to be able to keep Talion alive. And we have an actual freaking Balrog. The war for Mordor begins. The war at Mordor begins. One of the best missions in this is when you take your five branded war chiefs and whatever... Uh, help you had attached to them, put them on whatever orc was your nemesis and five of his best soldiers, and you had a pretty good, decent battle out of that. So hopefully, the war for Mordor means that you get to brand orcs right off the bat, and then be able to control hundreds of them and have a giant, you know, <gasps> type of battle this game. And then we have the Nazgul, the Ringwraiths, attacking Gondor years before Lord of the Rings. So they're going to have to somehow justify this siege of the Nazgul on... They're going to have to somehow justify this assault on Gondor because <laughs> that didn't happen in, you know, they never brought up that the Nazgul attacked before the Lord of the Rings trilogy happened. I'm coming for you. Who's Talion coming for? The Wraith or Sauron? Middle-Earth, Shadow of War. Game reveal March 8th, 2017. Available August 22nd, 2017. Pre-order now. Yeah, uh, wait a couple of months. Pump the brakes on that. And then there's a standard silver and gold edition of the game. So probably, you know, the standard edition is just the game. Gold edition is, you know, probably with a couple of extra DLC bits to it. And then the gold edition will be the season pass, which there inevitably will be because like because this had a season pass. But the only piece of DLC really worth buying was the Bright Lord DLC expansion. Anyway, I am very interested because if you go back to uh, 203, you see uh, the tower, you know, the second tower of uh, Sauron. So, and they do mention Sauron in the Shadow of Mordor. They do mention him. So maybe there'll be some fight against him. Uh, one thing I'm also noting from this image that we see of the back of Talion is that his sword and dagger are the same. His uh, sword is is his normal sword, and then his dagger is actually the broken half of his sun sword. There were a bunch of missions where you recreated things that Celebrimbor had done in the Second Age that then reforged Talion's weapons and made them more elf-like in appearance, which made them look a hell of a lot cooler. I really hope that they either redo, like, if you have those weapons in Shadow of Mordor, it'll sense that and keep them like that, or give us some kind of way to reforge them again if they some for some reason revert. Uh, I hope they keep the rune system in because that's a real that's a really good implementation of an RPG system. Is uh, the rune system from uh, 
Shadow of Mordor. I just hope that uh, they make it a little bit easier to get certain types, because for a long time I was going around with like two runes on my bow, because nobody was dropping bow runes. Yeah, so the trailer looks good. Obviously, you know, it's it's a completely cinema, cinema, cinemagraphed, uh, basically what you call a cut. It's not even an in-game cutscene. Like, this is a this is like a movie trailer. But the, uh, the game reveal is coming the day after uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands comes out, which I'm getting. So I'll definitely make sure to look out for that and uh, do an update then, because I am interested in seeing how this game plays. And then the game comes out in August, and if it impresses me by then, I will definitely uh, pick it up. So yeah, uh, I'm I'm very interested. I'm happy that they're that Monolith is still making it. Uh, Monolith Games, they're the people that uh, made the Condemned games, which were pretty brutal. Yeah, I really hope that they make just as good a product, because... Shadow of, Shadow of Mordor was a really good game. It was a really good game. And it was actually, for, even for someone who knows like the bare minimum about the Lord of the Rings, it still managed to get you entrenched, just like the same way that the Batman Arkham games made you feel like you were Batman, even if you didn't like Batman or didn't know anything about Batman. Shadow of Mordor made you feel like you were actually in Middle Earth because they included enough references and, you know, lore pieces within the world to make it feel like a unique story within the massive primordial soup of nerd culture. So yeah, that was my look at the Shadow of War trailer. And uh, until next time when I do the game trailer, the gameplay reveal trailer, hopefully, I will see you all next time. Best game ever. <coughs> Ugh! <laughs>